Good day everyone, this is Professor Friday coming at you one more time. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of differential equations. So the technique that we're going to be talking about today is going to be power series solutions about an ordinary point. So the first uh, problem that we're going to take a look at here today is going to be find two linearly independent power series solutions of the following differential equation. Coefficient of y double prime is x squared plus 3, coefficient of y prime is negative 7x, and the coefficient of y is 16. So, given that we have been asked for power series solutions, we can immediately start with the assumption that a solution is going to take the form of a power series. Now, when it comes to the power series, uh, when we're dealing with an ordinary point, um, it is okay to go ahead and center this about any old ordinary point that you decide. Well, I've decided I would prefer x equals zero, just because x equals zero tends to be pretty nice. The only two singular points that we would have are points that make this guy equal to zero. So that'd be plus or minus i square roots of three. I don't really feel like getting too uh, imaginary today, so we're going to stick with this. So with this assumption in mind, let's actually keep this in green for now. So we'll take a couple derivatives so that we can plug this in. <clears throat> so differentiating x to the n, we'll have an n times x to the n minus 1. Ending point will still be infinity. You actually have a little bit of freedom as to what your starting point is here. Uh, generally accepted, though, we uh, re-index this thing to n equals 1, as the constant term is going to cancel out once we take a derivative. And when we take a second derivative, we will get another constant term to cancel out. That'll be at uh, n equals 1. So we'll start this one off at n equals 2. We'll go n equals 2 to infinity of c sub n times the derivative of this. We'll get an n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2 power. So this is where it all starts. Our goal is, now that we've taken these derivatives and plugged them in up here, what we're going to try to do is make the left-hand side identically equal to 0. Now, the way that we do that is by expanding the left-hand side using these derivatives and express it as its own power series. The coefficient of x raised to whatever power, every single coefficient is going to have to be identically equal to 0. So, first things first, let's do a little bit of algebra down here. That'll make this a little bit easier to work with. So, the algebra that we're going to do, we're going to call this x squared, y double prime, plus 3y double prime minus 7xy prime plus 16y is equal to 0. This little step algebra right here makes it so that when I multiply the x squared times the y double prime, uh, this will go a little bit more nicely. So let's go ahead and plug in all of those things and see what we get. So this will be x squared times y double prime, that was n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times c sub n times x to the n minus 2 plus 3 times that same second derivative. There's an n, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2, minus 7x times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n times c sub n times x to the n minus 1, plus 16 times the original power series. Oh my gosh. I think I can fit it in on this line. Oh my gosh, that was close. All right, you might consider reorienting your, um, your, your pages to portrait instead of landscape for this one. All right, we've got a little bit more algebra to do here. We're going to bring the x squared inside of the power series for the first one. So we'll call this the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times c sub n and then we'll get an x raised to the n power. We're going to do the same thing for the next one. Bring the 3 inside the series, n equals 2 to infinity of 3 times n times n minus 1, c sub n. Now this one is going to stay at x to the n minus 2. The next one, we'll keep that as a minus sign as we pull the 7 and the x to the inside. That'll be n equals 1 to infinity of 7 n c sub n the x times x to the n minus 1, we'll boost that up to an x to the n power. And the last one will stay basically how it was, n equals 0 to infinity of 16 c sub n x to the n. That's all supposed to be identically equal to 0. 
Now the next step is ideally we'd like to turn this into just one big series expression. So what we're going to do is a technique called re-indexing. Really what's going on here is that we are going to shift everything so that every single one of these series will have x raised to the same power. And our goal <clears throat> is going to have x raised to the k power in all of these situations. So in order to get x raised to the k power, we have to make an appropriate substitution. Every single exponent that we see, we would like that to become k. So on the first one, this one's a very straightforward substitution since we already have an n here, we'll just simply substitute k equals n. On the second one, we have an n minus 2. So we're going to let k take on the role of n minus 2 on this one, which also means that if we solve for n, we'll get that n is equal to k plus 2. On this one over here, we have an x raised to the n power already, so we can substitute very directly, simply k is equal to n. And on our last one here, we'll get, uh, let's see, same thing. So we'll let k be equal to n. Now I'm thinking at this point, when I go over to my other piece of paper, I'm going to need to reorient this thing. So let's try this out. Let's, uh, hmm, oh boy, this is about to get fun. This is how things escalate. <clears throat> so the first substitution again is very direct. This is k is equal to n. So instead of starting at n equals 2, this one will start at k equals 2. Oh, right, I forgot to write that down. Uh, this was referred to as the re-index step. So re-index to get everything in terms of x raised to the k power. So I'll have k equals 2 to infinity, n becomes k, n becomes k, n becomes k, n becomes k. Uh, when you have the substitution k equals n, there's very little math to actually <laughs> do there, so that's kind of nice. Plus, for the next one, we're going to let k be equal to n minus 2. So if I plug in this n equals 2 to the top relationship, we'll get that this thing is now starting at k equals 0, or 2 minus 2, I suppose. Uh, we'll have 3 times n, but n is replaced with k plus 2. n minus 1 will now be k plus 1. Add 2 to that. We'll get a c with a subscript k plus 2, and we'll get an x to the k, which is exactly what we wanted. The next term after this will be this guy, and again, there is very little re-indexing to take place here. So k equals 1 out to infinity of 7, and then all of the n's simply become k's. That one's very straightforward. And then our last term will be plus, oh boy, uh, sum. Again, k equals n is the substitution, so this one's going to be relatively straightforward. So we'll get a 16 c sub k, x to the k power. Once again, this is all supposed to be equal to zero. Holy cow, feeling good. All right, let's make a little adjustment here. Oh man, just barely fits in the frame. How awesome is that? Fantastic, okay. So now, the next problem that we're gonna run into is the fact that this one starts at k equals two, which indicates that the lowest power we're gonna get out of this is uh, x squared. This one starts at k equals 0, so we'll get a constant term and an x to the first power. This one starts at k equals 1, so this one starts at uh, x, and then uh, this one is k equals 0. So again, this will start with a constant term. So what we're going to need to do is expand the series so that they all start at the same point. By expand the series, I mean actually start plugging in values of k so that we can get them all to the same starting point. Now, our limiting series is going to be this guy over here. This one starts at k squared, so, or excuse me, it starts at x squared, starts at k equals 2. So we're going to need to expand these other series out the first couple terms so that we can see what those look like. So plug in values of k until all series use the same initial point, or initial value of k. Now again, our limiting guy was this guy over here. This one starts at k equals 2. So what we're going to do is take the cases of k equals 0 and k equals 1, but only take the relevant values from each of these. So for k equals 0, we would only need to take from the second series and from the last series. 
Let's go ahead and plug in k equals 0 with both of these guys. So if I plug in k equals 0, we'll have 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times c sub 2 times x to the 0 power. This guy is going to contribute, well, let's see, let's plug in k equals 0. We'll have 16 times c sub 0, and then we'll have an x to the 0 after that. Okay. Then, for k equals 1, we'll have contributions from all three of these series. So let's plug in k equals 1 for each of them. So k equals 1, that'll be 3 times 3 times 2 times c sub 3. We'll also get an x, but we're going to factor that out. This one contributes, if we plug in k equals 1, this will be minus 7 times 1 times c sub 1. Again, we'll get an x to the first power as well. And then our last series contributes a plus 16 times c sub 1. That whole thing is going to be x. Now the reason that we bother doing things like this is due to the fact that this thing on the right hand side is equal to 0. So the mentality to get into for this 0 over here is that this is really 0 plus 0x zero plus 0x zero squared plus 0x cubed and really just express that as its own little power series up there. This indicates to us that every single coefficient of every single power of x, as well as the constant term, are all going to be equal to zero. Now, what we got for k equals zero, that is exactly our constant term. This is going to have to be equal to zero. For k, <coughs> excuse me, for k equals one, this also is uh, a coefficient, and uh, the, the coefficient of x is also supposed to be equal to zero. So, if we were to do a little bit of algebra with both of these guys, this indicates that c2, let's see, that'd be 6c2 is equal to 16c0. So I'm going to subtract 16c0 and then divide both sides by 6. But then I'm going to reduce that down. So really what we were looking at here is this was from 6c2 plus 16c0 is equal to 0. The solution of that gives us this. This one looks like it's going to be a little more complicated, so I'm going to do more steps with this one. It's looking like we have 3 times 3 times 2, that's 18c3 minus 7c1 plus 16c1. That's all supposed to be equal to 0. Oh my gosh, the algebra just got so much better. So this will be 18c3 uh, plus 9c1 is equal to 0. Solving for c3. We get that c3 is equal to negative 9 eighteenths, so that'll be negative 1 half times c1. So these two expressions right here are going to lay the foundation of our recurrence relation that we are going to be developing based on this big bad lad up here. So speaking of that big bad lad up here, starting at k equals 2, we can now combine all of these into one big series. So we've got the case of k equals 0, we've got the case of k equals 1, k equals 2, all of these things are going to be contributing. So let's put them all together now. We'll have a k times k minus 1 times c sub k, that's from the first series. Second series contributes plus 3, k plus 2, k plus 1, c sub, k plus 2. The third series contributes minus 7k c sub k and then the last series contributes plus 16 c sub k. All of these are multiplied by x to the k. So we've officially taken that big set of series, expanded the series as is appropriate so that they all have the same uh, starting point at k equals 2. Now going back to this principle up here every single coefficient is supposed to be equal to zero. Now every single coefficient now takes on this form, which means we can take this thing and set that coefficient equal to zero. So big important conclusion we take out of all of this is that k times k minus one times c sub k plus three times k plus two times k plus one times c sub k plus two minus seven k c sub k plus 16 c sub k, that whole thing is going to have to be equal to zero. 
Now, another thing to look out for is this is supposed to be true for all relevant values of k. And we, when we say relevant values of k, I mean head back here and say that this is only true if k is greater